the Beard from Metal Gods TV, and I am with Ben and Ol from Evile. Hello! Hi! <laughs> <laughs> That's end of end of. It was. It seems, well, only five minutes since I saw you guys for the first time at Bloodstock. I think was it your dad that was your manager then or something? No, he just drove us around. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> That's about it. Pumped all the gear. Did yeah. pretty much all the leg work, all the heavy lifting and stuff. Yeah. And he's like fifty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> but now we talk. You're talking about a third album, which seems you know like way out there since then. Yeah, it's happened really, really quick. Like you say, it seems like it only yesterday we were at Bloodstock. It certainly feels like only yesterday we were playing here at Rock City. So, yeah, someone once said to us, like when we were just starting out, that when you get signed, it's like standing on a treadmill. You just go. And that's what it feels like. We've just been non stop, really. Yeah. I think the work started then when we yeah. got signed. It was just, right, we've got so much to do, and it's just been going. And we just haven't stopped, really. Except for the obvious downhill bits but yeah and have you noticed the difference in sort of venues since then I mean I think first time I interviewed you was a, we were sat at the back of a tent on the floor and on the grass and what have you now we're in yeah. quite a posh decorated uh, dressing <laughs> I've noticed um, I think the only difference has been like a few more people have been turning up to shows and we're selling a bit more merch and it just seems to be a bit of a bigger buzz about the band like not huge but it's just going really well I think it's all about gathering momentum the longer you stay around the more momentum and weight you have behind yourselves um, there's a lot of bands that have been and gone in the time that we've had our brief career so far and it's, it's, it's weird to think of bands that come and have a lot of success in a short time and then disappear in, and then you have bands like ourselves that fingers crossed touch wood and all that stick around for a while yeah. so and have people sort of finally Settle down to the album because I mean, when you did enter the grave, and then people were moaning and saying, Oh, this one's different now, the new one's different. I mean, is it sort of people got used to it? Do you think? I think people understand what we're about a little bit more. We've matured a lot as a band, and the music has. And I think our fans' like perception of us has matured as well. Uh, we're not just that thrashy band from Huddersfield anymore, we've got a lot more to give. And I think Infected Nations did throw a few people, but good, we wanted it to. Um, I think we went a bit too far though. We thought, I oh, know, let's try, let's try this, and then we finished it and listened like a year later. We're like, shouldn't have really made that eighteen hours long. <laughs> like, cut a three few minutes off. But I think that's what's going to make the uh, next album a bit more, um, just to the point and more immediate. Yeah. We learn, we learn so much from the second album. Like, we shouldn't have done this. We, this works. We've learned like what crowds like when we just stand there and go <laughs> at. So. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the epic stuff. I mean, uh, Metallica sort of do that sort of thing regular, you know, the long I mean, epic songs. I mean, fair enough, maybe live some of them might not go down quite so well. I think people have got sort of, oh, have they finished it yet? You know, but the, th the thrashy stuff's still there. Yeah. Uh, I think as long as the material's strong, a long song doesn't matter, but I think we stretched it out a bit too much <laughs> on, on that. I think you can have a long song and get away with it if it keeps your attention. Yeah. There's some songs that are long and for us to play they feel like they're over in three or four minutes and then you look at the clock and it's been nearly eight and a half or whatever so you can't, you can't really gauge it. And is the new album very much on, you know, is it, is it back to the old style or are you going to mix the match or...? It's, it's a lot more angry and um, heavy. It's a nice blend of the two. Yeah. But not in, not you know, not overdoing it in any way. There's not any pointless proggy parts where I play <laughs> three different notes in half a second and it's playing just eleven metal. seven and stuff like that yeah. with stupid time signatures. And it's whatever. just metal. <clears throat> That's it. And have we got a time slot for when the new one's going to be released? Um, hopefully June, July. The month after July, what's that called? August. August. Because <laughs> uh, we're recording in March, and then we just want to rush to get it out, so it's out for summer, so everyone can just have it and enjoy it for summer. It should be out for festival season. So, and uh, I've got a few questions from fa well fans and viewers and listeners, oh, right? Fans. Yeah, got some fans. <laughs> the first one is, I mean, I think you've answered this one before for me, but I'm going to ask it again anyway. It's from uh, um, Nathan Barley Phillips, who's actually the head of Basic Records, cool. and, he, and he wants to know if. Uh, it was a deliberate homage to Sepultura uh, Rise album, the cover to Infected Nations. No, but it came from 
me and Matt were listening to Beneath the Remains and we thought, how cool would it be to get Michael Whelan to do an original piece? The guy who did like, most of their covers. And we're like, oh yeah, that'd be good as a joke. So I emailed him as a joke, just saying, <laughs> would you like to do a cover? We've got a concept. And we're like, yeah, that'd be great. And we're like, oh, okay. And it just happens that because he's the same artist as the Arise cover, that it just has that vibe. We didn't say we want it to look like a rise. We probably said, don't make it look like a Sepultura one, but it's Michael Whelan, so he just went, Bleh. and he looks like it. He cast a Sepultura spell on it. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose if you use the same artist, it's going to be fairly similar. He's not, he's not going to change his style up overnight, is he? Uh, the next one's from uh, a James Hammond. Um, it says, how efficient were the Bloodstock crew on a scale of 1 to 10 when you played them? Always 10, even more. They, they do everything for you. They're just really friendly and accommodating. They'd you never feel rushed and in the wrong place. And I think some festivals can be like that, certainly abroad. Sometimes you feel like you're getting pushed out of the way, like, have you finished your set? Yeah, right, fuck off. <laughs> but the like it's like, is everything all right? They just make sure you're all right. It's really cool. You only asked that because he worked there, so... <laughs> it <was> like... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's another one from Adrian Heathershaw. He says, "Would you be cheesed off to stumble across a thrashploitation number entitled Enter the Killer from the Deep Grave?'" He says it, he's got a little something up his sleeve. I think it'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, quite funny. <laughs> we have this thing where when we're on tour and someone says something mm. like something, we end up putting the words together and making like mashups and stuff anyway. So yeah. if he's got that up his sleeve and he wants to work on it. Hit us with it for sure. I wanted to do a, um, some merchandise for a baby, like a suit, and have it like exit the womb instead of into the grave, and have like a pacifier falling to a baby instead of a person falling to hell. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the sort of stuff that goes through your brains when you're on tour, is it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> long nights. <laughs> right, this is from Bruce Rumbold from Ireland. He says, when are you guys going to be arriving at Hammerfest? Because last time they met you, it was two years ago, they had a good piss-up with you, and it's been too long, so they want to know when you're arriving and if they can have a piss-up with you. I'm pretty sure they can. Um, <laughs> when are we playing? Uh, we're playing Saturday. I think we'll be getting there early Saturday, but we have to leave in the evening because we've got to get back and sort all our gear out for the studio because I think it's like the 19th and we're recording on the yeah. 22nd. Yeah. So we've got to go all the way back up, get all our gear, come back down to the south to meet Russ. But yeah, we might. We'll be there. We don't know what time we'll be arriving, but if they hang around the car park <laughs> long enough, <laughs> yeah. they'll see a shitty van trundling <laughs> into sight. And... As long as I can watch Thonic. Yeah. That's what you're bothered about. Uh, this one's not from anybody, but it's from me. It's, have you got any peculiar, silly habits? I mean, one of mine is when I eat opal fruits. I won't call them starbursts because they're opal fruits. Uh, I take out the ones that I don't like and I eat them first. I know it seems stupid. I don't Shit like them. Rich. Well, because what, you mean they don't keep this belly without with throwing f- f- uh, sweets away, do you? You know what I mean? So, um, <laughs> any stupid habits and stuff? Hmm. It's got mm. to be. I can't stop playing other bands' riffs whilst we're on stage. Like a song like, <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Duh, like yeah, thank you. I'll be like, duh, 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 and start playing Megadeth or something. I can't oh. help it. I just, it's that silence. It's like, oh, I need to do something. Megadeth. <laughs> That's mine. I think a lot of it's just absent minded stuff that you do in the van while you're travelling that people pick up on and you don't know you're doing it yourself. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff like that. Um, obviously, there's the whole snoring issue when people are asleep and stuff. Um, <laughs> get out! I'm going! <laughs> um, no, I don't do we do anything when we're playing? Play? <laughs> no, I mean like in between, we always dick about and stuff. That's not I really an annoying think. habit, is it? We've probably got loads, but we just do it so much that it's just... I think that's one for our fans to answer. They need to be more observant and tell us what we're doing. And then we'll be like, oh, shit, I didn't realise I was even doing yeah. that. <laughs> and uh, do you have any rants that, you know, in daily you think, oh, that really pisses me off? I mean, I, I have one about my beard. People always say to me, why have you dyed it purple? Why is it like that? How long have you took to grow that? And it really, really pisses me off. Yeah. So have you got anything that you rant about daily? It's not a daily thing. We had an incident earlier on, didn't we, with obstinate people and self-important people you just don't need to be like that 
yeah. we were coming down a narrow street and some guy tried to get past in his car <laughs> and it was he was coming up the hill and we were coming down in the van with all the gear and everything and he pulled up alongside and just got out of his car and started giving our driver a load of crap through the window and it's like what? Why not make a joke of it and just laugh it off and say, oh, this is a bit tight, oh, it's going to be difficult, this. He said he was like, oh, I know how wide my car is, blah, 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 blah. We all just collectively thought, you tosser. <laughs> so, you're just tossers in general, what's that about? I, I just, Why are you a tosser? I hate bands who make things difficult for everyone else. When everyone's in the same boat, yep. everyone's out for the same reasons, <clears throat> and they're just twats. And... There's no need to be an idiot, it doesn't get you anywhere, so I hate bands that do that. I'm not saying any names, but yeah. fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> and uh, how did America go down? Did you enjoy that? Yes, that was very cool. Yeah. Other than the ridiculous drives, like a UK tour is nothing. It's like sign a van for 20 hours to 24 hours just nothing to look at because everything's just flat you just sat there <laughs> but then when you do see something it's amazing oh, oh it's trees <laughs> we were looking to get a day off um so on the same day like literally like back to back we went to the hoover dam and the grand canyon and just to see those back to back in the space of like a day and a half or whatever while you're traveling you wouldn't get to do that on a holiday or whatever so mm. you know it's it's pretty cool the shows were great as well it was the first time we did um, two months with Creator and Overkill, and you could see the people we were playing to, they were a bit just kind of stood there, like not okay, really knowing what to do. Second time we went round, we'd see them same people come up, like really into the band, and, like wearing shirts, and I think it's good that we just we've done like I mean, four circuits of America around, and each time you just notice it's a bit more. Just a bit more well received I yeah. think, and it's just it, was, it felt really good for it and do you think if you make it really really big it'll change you know look, you know, there's people that haven't changed you know like Axel Rose he's still a nice mad man is it going to change you yeah I'm going to be an ass. <laughs> yeah, I can see you travelling around in your own limo and everything <laughs> we'll have his own van each now, I think we'll always be four idiots from Huddersfield well and Dewsbury <laughs> I think I think people just get the whole misconception about what it's like to be on the road and it goes to the head sometimes fair enough if you start making a decent living out of the music industry that's really good but it shouldn't change who you are as a person because you know once upon a time you were that little band from arsehole nowhere that we are. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying I'm saying you get these bands that all of a sudden they break and yeah. it goes to the heads a little bit and I think it's Life's too short to be a dick like that. Yeah. Just I mean, be yourself and get on with it. They suddenly say, I'm not going to speak to him, I'm not going to speak to him. And you think, well, yep, these people are the ones who will probably put you up there in the first place. There you go. There you go. You get these bands saying that they're going to be taking over from Iron Maiden and Metallica. Mm. <laughs> the thing as well, you can't go around treating people like shit because you never know when you might need the help. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you remember your roots and you can always go back where you came from. That's what they're always saying to you. You always meet the person when you're going up, you only meet them coming back there. Of course. <clears throat> Hopefully you won't be coming back down with you know what I mean. <laughs> 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 and uh, finally, have you got something that you'd like to say to the people watching out here? Um, right. Watch out for the new album. Uh, should be out in like June or July-ish. Or the one after July. Or the one after July that you can't remember. Um, and yeah, just Bye. keep listening to Evil. Thank you. You got a title for it? Yeah, it, oh, oh, I see what he did there. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Buy It. <laughs> it's called the Evil Third Album. I nearly got him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you nearly got him. <laughs> Quite close. Cheers, lads.